All right, let's get to that uh, breaking news story. So we have some breaking news. It's breaking news. It's breaking news. With the coronavirus spreading, governments across the world have started taking up increasing actions to slow the virus's spread. In China, some 45 million people are under quarantine. Across Italy, schools have been shut down. And the US passed an $8.3 billion funding bill aimed at fighting the virus. The only problem? The virus isn't containable. But newer reports show that this isn't as bad as many people fear. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. And let's jump in. Three months ago, on New Year's Eve, the Chinese government announced a new strain of coronavirus had been spreading throughout Wuhan, China. Since then, the virus has spread to more than 100,000 people across 61 countries. So we have two things to discuss. The first, why, even with all the actions the governments of the world have been taking, is the coronavirus uncontainable? And the second, why that's not as bad as you might think. The three things that make the virus impossible to contain are how easily it spreads, how long it takes to show symptoms, and how many people never show symptoms at all. The best way to talk about how contagious a virus is is by talking about its R0 value. In simple terms, R0 predicts the number of people who can catch a given bug from a single person. A number less than one and the virus will quickly die out. Greater than one and now you have a pandemic on your hands. For reference, the flu has an R0 of 1.3 and the 2018 Ebola outbreak had an R0 of about 2. Both less than the coronavirus's R0 of 2.2. That puts it on par with the Chinese SARS outbreak from the early 2000s and the 1918 influenza pandemic, which was one of the deadliest pandemics ever recorded. This means that the virus can spread quickly between people and the number of cases would be expected to rise exponentially. Another useful metric when talking about diseases is the incubation time or the time between being exposed and when you first display symptoms. This is the time frame that you can spread the disease before even knowing you have it. For the flu, the incubation time is only about a day. But for the coronavirus, it's two weeks. This is one of the main factors that has made containment so difficult. People can get infected, fly across the world, have dinner with their friends, go out, meet new people, shake their hands, and cough into the air for two weeks before they even realize they've been infected. This has allowed the virus to spread to 61 countries, even sneaking past airport and checkpoints. Another example of the problems this long incubation time can pose are the new work policies many companies have implemented. Many companies have started telling their employees that if they think they've caught the bug, to stay home. But by the point that an employee realizes they're sick, they would have already been contagious and showing up to work for two weeks. And while China quarantining nearly 50 million people has no doubt slowed the virus's advance, they can't stay quarantined forever, and officials fear that once the quarantine is lifted, the virus will pick back up again. Finally, according to health officials out of the WHO, 80% of cases are mild to moderate, meaning the majority of people might not even realize they've caught the virus, allowing it to spread further since those people won't think to isolate themselves. This has led many health officials, including some at the WHO, to fear that the 100,000 reported cases worldwide might be an underestimate. But this is also good news. Hundreds of millions, if not billions of people are thinking about the virus, but for four out of five people that catch it, symptoms won't be much, and only 6% of people who caught it required immediate health support. And as more cases have come in, officials have realized the death toll will likely be far lower than initially expected. In Wuhan, where doctors became overwhelmed by the sudden influx of patients, the fatality rate was nearly 6%, but in other parts of China that got time to prepare, the death toll was less than 1%. And like we mentioned earlier, if many people catch the virus without even realizing it, even the 1% might be artificially inflated. Even more than that, if a few days more preparedness was enough to lower the death rate by 85%, the rest of the world that got even more time and realistically has better health infrastructure should be even better equipped to deal with these new cases. This isn't to say that we shouldn't fear the virus or take steps to prevent its spread. While overall death rates are low, for those over the age of 80 or with existing heart conditions, they have a nearly 1 in 5 fatality risk if they catch the virus. For now, make sure to wash your hands and stay home if you start coughing a lot. If you liked the video, consider watching our dive into the origins of the coronavirus here. And remember, there is always more to learn.